This is what happens when you try and do this alone very, very early in the morning. You got nobody to set up, so I'm the cameraman, I'm the gaffer, I'm the guy in front of the camera. Got my script right here. Hopefully everything's okay. Office is very quiet at six o'clock in the morning. So, anyways. All right, guys, Mike with Hardware Canucks here. And as I get in front of the camera a little bit more, there's something that you're gonna probably start to realize. And that is the fact that I like going a little bit deeper into some of the subjects that we cover. Sometimes that results in a video like this one. Sometimes it just gets pushed aside or rolled into other content. But anyways, what I wanted to talk about today is the 6600 XT. Look, from our perspective, it's not exactly the greatest GPU out there for the price. We find that AMD's price was a little bit high for that one. But one thing jumped out at me in that video, and that is the PCIe Gen 4 by 8 link. Now, in most situations, it wouldn't really matter. That PCIe Gen 4 by 8 link provides more than enough bandwidth on a Gen 4 motherboard. But what happens if you are one of the millions of people out there that are still using a Gen 3 motherboard? Well, like it or not, there's still only eight physical links between the GPU and the motherboard. And in some cases, that could cause bottlenecking. And that's really what I wanted to figure out. I know this has been covered a little bit here and a little bit there, but I wanted to go a little bit deeper. And unfortunately, I went maybe a little bit too deep. And I pulled out 20 games and also four professional applications to see if that by eight link would cause any type of bottlenecking. So I wanted to get to all of that right after a message from our sponsor. Don't have the time to wait for parts and build your own gaming PC? NZXT Build has your back. Navigate through their simple UI, choose the games you want to play, pick a budget that works, and the configurator will do its magic by offering some options built just for you. Or choose from one of their awesome pre-built setups. Want something more custom? Go crazy building your own dream PC from the ground up. All of these are backed with a two-year all-in-one warranty on parts, labor, and RAM overclocking. Save your time and start gaming right away with NZXT Build. Now available in Australia as well. Okay, with that done, I wanted to get into a little bit of explanation about why AMD decided to go with a by 8 Gen 4 link. And a lot of that has to do with, I guess, taking a page out of the laptop playbook. And what that narrower link allows is a little bit higher efficiency, so some power savings and also some die space savings. Now, for the laptop market, that is a key selling point, especially for the Navi 23 core that has to be ultra efficient. On the flip side, on the desktop market, it doesn't matter as much, but this allowed AMD to have some commonality between their laptop parts and the desktop side. But from a more technical perspective, it means a whole lot for bandwidth. Technically, the raw throughput of 16 PCIe Gen 4 lanes is approximately 32 gigabytes per second, and cutting that in half brings you to 16 or the same bandwidth as a by 16 PCIe Gen 4 slot. So on a Gen 4 motherboard, this GPU will not have any bandwidth issues. I mean, it's simple maths, right? Well, when the 6600 XT gets installed on a Gen 3 motherboard, it only has access to those eight physical slower lanes, and that's just eight gigabytes per second. That might have been perfectly fine for something like the 5500 XT, which was launched with a Gen 3 by eight link, but on something like this, that's about double the speed. Well, that's where I started having my questions. And to see if I can come up with an answer, I've lined up those 20 games and four GPU accelerated programs with Blender Cycles, Resolve, Premiere, and finally, Photoshop Acceleration 2. Now, in order to test apples to apples, really the only way that you can do that is with a Gen 4 motherboard that allows you to switch between PCIe Gen links. So in this case, we're using an ASRock Tai Chi board that allows us to go from Gen 4 to Gen 3 in order to properly test this. And other than that, it's our normal test system with a 5900X, 32 gigabytes of memory, and all that other stuff. Let's start off with a lot more demanding games at 1080p, and you'll see that for the most part, in these titles at least, there's absolutely no impact when running with only eight Gen 3 lanes. Any differences really boil down to margin of error and nothing more. But you might have noticed that there weren't a full 20 games on those last charts, and that's where this next part comes in. And these are the games I tested where the gap between the interfaces was more than just a slim amount. Some of them, like Doom, Black Ops Cold War, Fortnite, and Warhammer 2, are pretty drastic. Other ones like Dota 2 and Civ 6 
have a small difference, but really nothing to be worried about. What's interesting is the ones showing such a large discrepancy between Gen 3 and Gen 4 seem to also be either pretty system memory intensive like Doom, or they put a really good multi-core load on the CPU like Cold War. As for higher resolutions, the standings here, well, they're basically the same as 1080p, at least for the titles that weren't affected by the PCIe interface. So I'm going to gloss over these a little bit quickly. Moving on to 1440p, and what's interesting is moving to a bit higher resolution actually tightens things up for the games that suffer under the Gen 3 interface at 1080p. Personally, I think the reason behind this is pretty simple. At this point, the GPU becomes more of a bottleneck, and that simply means there's less information being sent to and from the CPU. So at this point, the bandwidth becomes less of a bottleneck, at least in most situations. So I guess that's pretty good news for anyone who ends up buying one of these cards expecting to play at quad HD or above on a Gen 3 interface. So now that we've established what's going on in games, I wanted to sort of shift gears a little bit and talk about professional applications because like it or not, these GPUs and the systems that they're going to be used in are typically multifunction. Yes, there are going to be gaming systems that are going to be used for gaming exclusively, but on the flip side of that coin, people who buy one of these things are now expecting to do more with it. So is that Gen 3 interface going to make an impact when we're talking about some other different types of applications? And the answer to that, at least in Resolve, is Yes, right away you can see there's a benefit to running in native Gen 4 mode. Like I said before, performance deficiencies while running the 6600 XT in x 8 Gen 3 mode seem to arise more often when the CPU and GPU are chugging away at the same workload. And some situations, like Resolve and Premiere here, are true co-processing scenarios where there is a ton of data being handed off between both the CPU and GPU in parallel. They need as much bandwidth as possible between them. So there's certainly some losses when moving to a much slower interface. But moving on to something like Blender Cycles that only uses GPU compute and has very little CPU involvement and we're right back to a tied scenario. Photoshop is actually the same way too. Its GPU intensive tasks like masking and smart sharpening leverage the OpenCL graphics cards without stressing the processor at all. So you get zero difference between the PCI Express configs. All right, so I guess that wraps up this quick little video. And I know I threw a lot of data at you in a short amount of time, so let's summarize everything. Basically, if you're using a 6600 XT on a Gen 3 motherboard, by and large, there's absolutely no difference in the lion's share of games out there between Gen 3 and Gen 4. On the other hand, there's a couple of outliers out there, like Doom and a couple of other titles, that are mostly focused on those games that do tend to load the CPU or the memory subsystem a little bit more. Are those a ton? I have absolutely no idea to know unless I test every single game out there on the market. You just need to be aware that there are a couple of titles that you will see a small amount of difference or at least a small amount of performance hit. Is that performance hit significant? In most cases, you're not even going to see it. It's imperceptible. On the other hand, on the professional market is where things get a little bit interesting. If you're in a true co-processing scenario where the CPU and GPU are communicating with each other, you are going to see a little bit of a cut in performance on a Gen 3 link. On the other hand, if it's just a GPU that's chooching away, there's absolutely no difference whatsoever. So in my opinion, this whole thing, I don't think Gen 3 users really need to be concerned. The 6600 XT for them is probably going to be a huge upgrade. And in the situations where it is a little bit slower on the Gen 3 interface, those differences are mostly going to be in outlier scenarios and not in every single case. So I guess that's it for this video. I hope you really enjoy little bits of content like this where I go a little bit deeper into some of the nuts and bolts that we test. If you want to see a little bit more of these things, let me know in the comments below. I'm Mike with Harbor Canucks. I hope you have a great day. Until next time.